given me to share with you. If you have your Bibles, go to John chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. John chapter 12, don't lose your mind of worship because I believe that God has a word for you tonight and I believe that it is positioned straight to you and I just have to obey him. I waited on him to tell me whether to preach or whether to just go ahead and minister and he said go ahead and preach what I gave you and that's what we're going to do, amen? We got to obey the Lord. I want to share this with you in John chapter 12 verses 9 and 10. It says, Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. I'm going to read it one more time. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and that he had came Not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, who he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. Father, I ask you for the next few moments that you would anoint this word. God, I pray as you have sent this word tonight that you would minister to your people. God, that chains would be broken, deliverance would take place. Father, we thank you for everything that you're going to do and have already done in this house, what you have already done in this revival. We declare tonight, God, that the Spirit of the Lord can have its way. God, this is your house. We come against every lying demon and devil of hell that would try to oppress this service, that would try to oppress this worship, that would try to oppress the hearts and the minds of the people we come against it and Satan I declare to you right now you have no authority nor do you have any position in this house but we take authority over you and we crush you under our feet in the name of Jesus and we declare that this word will go forward it will minister to people it will touch people's lives it will break chains in Jesus name and everyone shouted that's pretty good everyone shouted Amen. amen give the Lord a big hand clap of praise At this point in the scripture here in John chapter 12, 9 and 10, we talked about Lazarus last week, but the Bible says that there was a large crowd that began to assemble. Thank you, praise team. I appreciate you very much. Give them a hand. Amen. Thank you guys very much. The Bible said that there was a large crowd that began to assemble. Whenever that they found out that Jesus was coming to town, the Bible said that it was a very large crowd that began to gather around them. And I can just imagine that it was just hundreds of people, maybe a thousand people that were gathering around Jesus whenever he came into the city. But the Bible said that some of them were there to see Jesus, but then there were some that were there because they wanted to plot against Lazarus because you have to remember that Jesus just Earlier in the scripture had raised Lazarus from the dead and now you have people that are coming and they're looking at Lazarus and they're saying wait a minute we're going to plot against you and we're going to kill you and we're going to destroy you because the hand of God has been moving in your life. Yes there were some there that wanted to see the move of God. Yes there were some there that came to see Jesus and everything that he had to offer but there were some people there whose heart was not right whose mind was not right and And all they wanted to do was to destroy and to kill Lazarus. And I'm going to tell you tonight, any time that God does a work in your life and he does ministry in your life and he does resurrection in your life, you better know that there will be an enemy that will plot against you tonight, that will rise up against you, that will say, I'm going to kill you. They'll come around you and they'll talk a good game around you. But underneath it all, there's one thing that they want want to do they want to wipe you out tonight come on give him praise just a little bit for me See, the first thing that the enemy's going to do is he's going to try to remind you that God didn't move in your life in the first place. Well, you really didn't get healed. You really didn't get 
deliverance. You really didn't get the breakthrough that you thought you were going to get. He will try to convince you that the miracle that took place in your life, it was not real. It was fabricated. Oh, you really didn't even have the encounter with God that you thought you had in the altar. And the same people that witnessed you go down and fall into ashes and then rise back up will be the same people that will try to push you back down and tell you, no, God didn't move in your life. But if you know that the hand of God did something in your life, there is no enemy tonight that can hinder what the power of God has done in your life tonight. There'll be people that will witness you rise from the ashes. And instead of celebrating with you, instead of saying, I'm with you, I believe in you, I know that God is with you, they will turn on you in a moment's notice and they will stand back and they will wish with everything that they have that you fall back. And that's exactly what happened here in the Word of God. You had worshipers showing up. You had people that were dedicated to God showing up. But then suddenly you had people that wanted to see Lazarus killed. Anytime that there's a resurrection in your life, Anytime that something that was dead that God brings back to life, you better know that the enemy will show up and he will try to put that thing that came out of the grave, he will try to put it back into the grave. Why? Because he doesn't want any display of the miracle signs and wonders because the moment that God starts moving, come on somebody, the moment that the Holy Ghost starts moving, the enemy is going to do everything he can to stop it tonight. See, it was the chief priest that had plotted against Lazarus and Jesus. When I looked up chief priest, I knew what it meant, but I just wanted to look it up so I could bring it to you in its entirety. But it says someone who has meditated day and night and has a relationship with God that goes, now listen to this, that knows this, how to do ceremonies, that knows how to connect the people to God. So in other words, they were the religious people. Isn't it funny that the Bible said right here, it says that it was the chief priest that has destined to try to kill Lazarus. It wasn't the people in the world. It was the religious folk. It was the Christians. It was the ones that were supposed to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. They were the ones that were trying to wipe out Lazarus. Whenever you find yourself in the middle of the battle, it won't be the person at the bar. Sometimes it'll be the very one that's saying hallelujah right across the aisle from you. See, the Bible said that here's what happened. The chief priest decided, I'm going to kill the thing that was resurrected. And what's hilarious to me when I was studying this, any time that there's a resurrection or a move of the Holy Ghost, religious people are going to do everything that they can to kill the move of God. You start fasting, the devil's going to show up. You say you're going to do new music, the devil's going to show up. You try to press into the presence of God, the enemy's going to show up. The pastor gets up and says, this year's going to be different than it's ever been. God is going to do great things among us. The enemy will show up. They don't show up whenever you're just sitting there doing nothing idle. They show up when there's a mandate from God that says we're not just going to stay here, but we're about to move forward. That's when the enemy attacks. Could have killed anybody in that room. Could have plotted against anybody in that room. Could have plotted against Martha. Could have plotted against Mary. But see, they plotted against the one that had been resurrected and the one that was going to be resurrected. God Almighty knows. You got to see Lazarus had been resurrected and Jesus was going to be resurrected. Whenever you try to resurrect something that God gave you, the enemy will try to silence it tonight. So that tells me that he tried to silence what was past, and he's trying to silence what's the future. Some of you have had hopes. You've had dreams. 
You've had things in your life that God has moved on right here in this altar, right at your home, right in your car, right in the times that you were spending time with God all by yourself. The Holy Ghost showed up. And now the enemy is telling you, I'm going to go back to 1992 and I'm about to kill every dream that you had, everything that God told you, every prophetic word that was ever spoken. He's going to plot against it. And what do we do? We run in fear when God said we need to stand up and fight the enemy tonight. Never in my life have I seen so many people afraid to fight. We sign up to be a Christian because we want roses and a cookie jar and we want everything to be good and we want to dance through the tulips. But let hell show up and we buckle and crumble. But that's not the way it's supposed to be. There are people outside of the house of God that have more of a backbone than some people that are supposedly baptized in the Holy Ghost. We got people walking around speaking in tongues in the altar trying to cast out devils and then they go out in the world and they crumble. But if you can activate it in here and you can act all big and bad in here when you get out in the world and you're persecuted don't you lose your praise I've seen people stand up and shout the pastor down glory but as soon as that foot of his stomps on your plan He's no longer your shepherd. Now he's your enemy. Ouch. Because when it messes with our plan, and it messes with our dream, and it messes with our hope, we suddenly get offended by what is trying to happen. And we say, wait a minute now. Hold on. You're not going to mess up what I've got going on. But you got to understand that the devil has a plan and so does God tonight. And you can sit here and ignore the enemy all you want to. But there is a devil that has plotted to kill you. There is an enemy that wants to wipe you out. There is an attack and a plot and a blueprint that has been written out with your name on it. But I'm telling you right now, no weapon that is formed against you, it will not prosper. Every lying tongue that has ever risen against you, it will be destroyed because we are the people of God we are full of the Holy Ghost we are full of the power of God we are full of the anointing it is not time to cower in the corner but it's time to rise up and it's time to fight the enemy tonight do you know why division happens in our worship team so much because the enemy was a worship leader he walked and music flowed out of him. He fell right out of heaven into the choir loft. That's why we have division in our worship. Because if he can ever stop worship, if he can ever get our mind off of worship, if he can get in here and this one's mad about this microphone, and this one's angry about this, and this one wants to be in the spotlight, and, well, I don't feel like singing that song. If he divides us in our worship, he will destroy us tonight. The enemy has a plan. And you better have one too, and it better be God's plan. Because if you sit idle long enough, the devil will wipe you off the face of the planet. Oh, he ain't going to mess with me. Let me tell you something. I've seen Holy Ghost filled people fall just as much as I've seen people that didn't have it in the first place. Because there is a plot that has been written with your name on it that wants to destroy you it just doesn't want you it wants your kids it wants your husband it wants your family it wants your friends he will do whatever it takes to take you out but the one thing that you have to do tonight is know that when the enemy orchestrates a plan that God has a bigger plan than anything that the enemy could try to do and Lazarus had been resurrected and the enemy said I'm going to kill it but guess what if God brings it back to life there is no devil in hell that can 
stop what God has said we'll live in the name of Jesus. If he said it will live, if he said it's alive, then it, nothing can take the breath out of it. Nothing can take what God has said is going to live and destroy it. And I'm going to tell you, you have to remember this. Not everybody will always celebrate you in the moments of victory. You have to be careful who you allow into your inner circle. But I don't have a whole lot of friends. Let me tell you something. Jesus only had 12 and still got betrayed. Your circle can be small as you want to have it, but there's always going to be an enemy that will try to come in and cause division. And some of you right now, and I know you're like, why are we preaching on this? Because let me tell you something right now. The Bible said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against higher powers and principalities and rulers of wickedness in dark places. Why? Because the enemy is working tonight with a plot. And sometimes when there's division in your home and there's division at your job sometimes we want to get mad and angry at that person but you have to understand it is an enemy and it is a devil that is fighting against you sometimes you need to stop fighting with your husband and your wife and you need to go to war against the enemy you get mad at the flesh but you should be mad at the demon behind it well, I didn't think we could be possessed. No, but you can be oppressed. Let me show you something. The Bible said that Peter, who was walking with God, who had the name, the rock, the foundation of the church, at one minute he was the rock, he was the foundation. But in another sentence, the Bible said that Jesus told him, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. He didn't say, get thee behind me, Peter. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. That's because at one moment in your life, you can be a gateway of heaven into the earth. But then about three hours later, if you're not careful and a waitress spills tea in your lap, you can be a gateway to hell into the earth. You have to be careful that you don't allow the enemy to sneak his plot into your life tonight you can be a gateway of heaven and you can be a gateway of hell which one will you be tonight because Peter was walking with the Lord and then something shifted in him in a moment's notice and Jesus addressed the source of the problem he said get thee behind me Satan and you need to stop going and trying to fight your spouse your children your boss and sometimes you need to put some anointing oil on your hands you need to walk into your home and say this fight's not between us it is between me and the devil and I'm about to anoint my home I'm about to anoint my desk at work I'm about to anoint my car why because the enemy is trying to come against me but my God is greater tonight give him some praise in this house the Bible said that King Saul was jealous of David because he had killed Goliath he was angry. Isn't it funny whenever God uses you to take down the giant that was tormenting everybody else, they get mad at you for doing it because they weren't the ones that did it, and so they don't get the credit, and so they get mad at you that God used you. But if they would get on their face before God, God would use them too. And the Bible said that King Saul was jealous. Of David because he slayed the giant. He killed the giant. The thing that had been oppressing them. God used him. Five smooth stones. And a slingshot. To evaporate the enemy. And it would be so that you would think. That when he came back with the head of the enemy. That they would celebrate him. But the town people celebrated him. But the king was mad and he was jealous. And so he said, you know what? I'm going to kill David. 
I'm going to throw a spear and I will nail him to the wall. Let me tell you something. The enemy will try his best to prophesy against your destiny and he will tell you, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to wipe you out. And the enemy will rear back with everything that he has and he will throw a spear at you. But I'm telling you right now, the Bible said every time a spear came, David moved out of the way. Why? Because the enemy tried to kill him, but the Holy Ghost was on him. And tonight, whenever the devil's throwing spears at you, you know that you can dodge out of the way by the power of the Holy Ghost. Some of you are only going to feel the wind of the spear go by your head as you move out of the way of it. But here's the problem. He prophesied against David. And he foretold. He said, I'm going to nail you to the wall. And some of you have heard the prophecy of the enemy louder than you've heard the prophecy of God. God said you'll live. The enemy says you'll die. But we believe the enemy's voice over God. We believe that the enemy has told us we're done. We're finished. We won't make it. And we take that thing in. And we sit there on it. And we dwell on it. And the next thing you know, you will be walking in defeat. And the plot of the enemy that is against you will have succeeded. We'll be able to defeat you. But you have to understand, there is a God tonight that if you will just us understand what his word says is more powerful than anything that the devil has ever spoken against you but you don't know what he said about me you don't know what my mother said about me when I was eight years old and it stuck in me so you hate your mother but with the truth of it is we wrestle not against flesh and blood the truth of the matter is, you're hating someone that hurt you at eight years old. But the fact is, that was nothing but the plot of the enemy to plant a seed in you. That you would carry that thing around for the next 13, 20 years of your life. And you've hated your mother, your father, or somebody in your family that hurt you when you were a kid. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood. There is an enemy that is plotting in the behind the scenes. And we need to expose it tonight. Don't carry your hurt around. We hate people in our life that's hurt us. Carry so much bitterness. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. You don't know what they did to me. But do you realize that the enemy can use and has used that to hold us captive? To hold us prisoner in our mind. Would you stand to your feet? Brother Aaron, would you come up here for me? To the keys. The enemy has a plot. But God has a plan. It's pretty good for about two of y'all. I said, the enemy has a plot. But God has a plan. That's better. I don't know who you are tonight. That you feel like that the enemy's done everything he can to destroy you and cause division in your home and in your family and in your life. But I know God sent this word to remind you that there is no device of the enemy that has power over God. It's time that we take the flesh off of the thing that we hate and realize that there was a demonic spirit behind it from the beginning. I remember when I was a kid, I was standing in my living room with my grandparents and they got, they would, for some reason, they got in a huge argument, fussing, fighting. They didn't do that a lot. They fussed like any married couple. But this was different. This was just crazy. We were getting ready to go to church. 
and it erupted and it was just so weird and I'm sitting there and I remember I was about 11 years old and as I looked I saw a dark figure behind them and I just began to fall to my knees and I started crying out Jesus and they both stopped and looked and they said what are you doing and I said there's something behind you that's moving the strings like you're a puppet right now causing division they prayed that thing left but tonight my question to you is this what plot has the enemy orchestrated against you and your life that you feel like there's no way out you feel like what's written on the paper is what's going to be and how it's going to end. But I don't care what the enemy has written down about you. Because the end of the the book says that I will overcome by the blood of the Lamb. You've been fighting with your husband, with your wife, but the Bible says you will overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And if you're not careful, the division in your home, you'll bring it to your friends, to your job, to your church and you will inject that spirit right in the middle of everybody else what you're going through a lot of times we carry that mess and instead of laying it at the altar we walk up and we smear it all over God's people How much longer are you going to carry that bitterness around and unforgiveness? How much longer are you going to carry it around? I know God sent this word for somebody. And I was about to pray for people. We could have went that route. God could have done it. But as soon as I prayed for that first lady and I obeyed the Holy Ghost, God said, don't do it. He said, preach. I said, God, in my mind, I'm going, Lord, the Spirit of God's moving right now. I said, if I do that, then it's going to come. He said, obey me and watch what I do. I said, okay, God. There's somebody in here that you're tired of carrying the same junk you've always carried. And it's time to get free. It's time to let it go. It's time to meet God right here, right now. And it will never hold you up again. See, whenever something goes out, you got to close the door behind you. Because if you leave the door open, something else will come in even seven times stronger than what it was the first time. Who else? I don't care if it's a couple, if it's a single person, if it's a kid, if it's the pastor, if it's me, if it's you, come down here and stand because God has got something for you tonight. 